Hey guys, Dr. Kyle Loveless here. Thanks so much for uh, taking a moment to watch this. I'm gonna spend some time with you today talking to, to you about things like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, thyroid issues, and how these things have such or so much in common and they really relate back to one thing, okay? So we're gonna dive into this and I'm gonna give you some easy and effective action steps to actually move forward with your health and learn more about your health. So number one thing I'm gonna talk about today is that concept of high blood pressure, high cholesterol, um, and this could even be low digestion or digestive issues, high or low thyroid issues. All these things actually stem from one thing. That one thing, and you might have already guessed this, but that one thing is stress, okay? So stress is the key. And this is so huge that the World Health, I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, CDC or World Health Organization, I can't remember which one, but they literally said that 90% of all the diseases that we're dealing with right now Right there, it comes from stress. And now when I talk about stress, the number one thing people think about when they think about stress, guess what it is? It's emotional stresses, like a problem with your spouse, uh, um, uh, work problems, money problems, all those things. And those are a type of stress, and they are a big type of stress that we have in our world today. However, most people don't realize that you also have physical stressors and chemical stresses in our environment today, and those are all causing your body to respond the exact same way that that emotional stress does, okay? And that stress has really led to the top diseases that we're seeing right now. So you have three different types of stress. You have your emotional stress, which is what we think about when we think about stress, right? You have your physical stress, and then finally you have a chemical stress, where you have these chemical stressors in our world and our environment, and they all are affecting our body the same way. So I'm gonna take you down a little bit of a physiology lesson today, and uh, the reason I'm doing that, instead of just giving you, you know, the top five ways to get rid of stress, or the top five things that cause thyroid issues, is because if you understand your body, this is big, if you understand your body, you understand how your body works, you can actually start making wise decisions when it comes to your health care. And this is gonna make a lot of sense. Think about it when you get a car, you get a manual, and I know a lot of us don't read that manual, but if you ever have something wrong with your car, hopefully the first place you go is to the manual and see what you can do about it, right? Well, the same thing with our bodies, the problem is we're not given a manual. The bigger problem is, is even though this is the, the, the vehicle that we all need to use, that we all have, that we have to use to get through life and, and, and perform and do amazing things in life, um, None of us know how it works. Most of your medical doctors don't know how it works. Most doctors don't know how it works. And I can say that with the truth because if they did, they wouldn't be um, going after the things they're going after. So I'm gonna talk about this concept here of stress real quick, okay? Let's do this, I'm gonna get a new marker. So here's how stress works. Okay, you have these uh, chemical, physical, and, uh, and emotional stresses here. And no matter what the stress is, let's just say, you went to the zoo today, you have an amazing, nice little walk through the zoo, you're in relaxation mode, you're enjoying it with your kids, you're going over, you look at the tiger exhibit, the tiger's so cool, it's, it's like the coolest thing you've ever seen, and you're just enjoying life, right? But then all of a sudden, the tiger gets out. What are you gonna do? You're gonna take off running, hopefully, and hopefully you run faster than everyone else, but here's what's gonna happen within your body. Your body's gonna go into what we call a fight or flight response, and you might have heard of this before. You have two different nervous systems. You have your sympathetic and your parasympathetic nervous system, okay? So I'm gonna put sympathetic for short, in S, and then I'm gonna put parasympathetic, in S over here. So that's your parasympathetic nervous system. Your sympathetic nervous system is fight or flight mode. So immediately when that happens, you go into a stress response your blood pressure goes up, okay? These are all good things, I'm gonna get a new marker here. Your blood pressure goes up over here. So you have high blood pressure. Your heart rate goes up, okay? Your uh, cortisol or stress hormones are gonna go up. Your cholesterol is gonna go up, and I'll tell you why here in a second. Specifically, LDL will be produced at this moment. Um, your immune system is gonna decrease, because you don't need to fight off disease right now. You need to uh, run. Okay. At the same time, your digestive system is going to decrease. Okay. At the same time, your thyroid, this is starting to make sense, isn't it? Your thyroid levels are going to decrease. It's actually going to slow down thyroid. Now, that's all the stuff that happens, and there's some more things that happen. But these are the main things that 
I want to talk about today that happens in a fight or flight response. Now, let me ask you this question. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Obviously, that's a good thing. If we didn't do that, we wouldn't be fighting or flighting, in this case, flighting from that tiger. Now, so your body, okay, this is your parasympathetic, this is your sympathetic. You go into a fight or flight response, you're being chased by a tiger, and wham, comes right up, this goes down. Good thing saves your life, right? Now, when you get to safety, you get outside the zoo, and you're in, you're in a safe zone, what's your body going to do now? It's going to equal back out. We call that homeostasis or balance. So when both your nervous systems are balanced, now your body can heal and function the way it's supposed to. Okay, And so they level themselves out and they move back and forth, right? You'll go back to a parasympathetic state and a sympathetic state, all depending on your environment. So your environment and how you see things and the stressors on your body are going to create this. Now, at the same time, you're going to go back to here after that fight or flight response. In the world we live in today, what's happening is we're going into a, a stress response or a fight or flight response. We're coming back here, we're going up here, we're coming back here, we're going up here day in and day out, and the more and more stressors that we have, chemical, physical, and emotional, right, from the foods we eat, to being on computers all day long and sitting, which is one of the biggest stressors in our body, to um, emotional stresses with our lives. And eventually what happens is it gets stuck up here. Now I'm not gonna get too into the science here, you have something called the HPA axis, and that's ultimately um, your, 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 your system, ultimately is saying that you get stuck in a stressed response, okay? You're in a chronic stress response. Now, the only way you're going to get healthy, you're going to get rid of the problem and symptoms that you have and get your body healing again, doing what it's supposed to, is not to take a medication. It is to get yourself back to here. Okay, you got to re get yourself back to homeostasis and back to a balanced state. Now, if you went to your doctor and you're in this sympathetic response and you have high blood pressure, what, you, what are you going to get? Well, you're going to get a medication for that. Okay, even though your blood pressure wasn't the problem. Your blood pressure can get way up there and you're just fine. Look, here's the thing. When you go exercise, your blood pressure goes way up. You don't have a stroke. Blood pressure is important. Your body's doing it for a reason. If you're in a stress response, your body's increasing the blood pressure for a reason. Heart rate goes up. If you have high cholesterol, I'm going to get on cholesterol here in a second, but if you have high cholesterol, what are you going to get? You're going to get a statin medication. And that statin medication will lower your cholesterol levels and you go to the doctor and your cholesterol is lower. And what does he say? You're healthy but you're still here, and not only are you here, you're actually putting more stress on your body because cholesterol is actually essential for you to be in a stressed response. If you lower your cholesterol, you can no longer produce cortisol or testosterone or uh, estrogen or progesterone because those are it's a precursor to all those hormones. Your adrenals, I'm gonna make a little side picture here, so I'm not gonna talk too much about parasympathetics today, so I'm gonna erase that, but side picture, let's say this is, this is your adrenals. Okay, so you have your adrenals, and your adrenals are going to produce things like progesterone, and okay, we've all heard of that because it's a precursor to a lot of things. Uh, it's going to produce cortisol, okay, You're, it's also going to produce estrogen and testosterone, right, and other hormones that your body needs. So these are all essential to our health. If we didn't have it, we wouldn't be, be happy, we wouldn't be healthy, we'd be, we'd be really sick. We see all these things. So when your cortisol levels go up, well, let me start here. So it produces all this, right? Guess what the only thing your adrenals use, the main thing your adrenals have to have to produce any of these? Cholesterol. So you have cholesterol over here, and specifically it's actually LDL. Your liver produces this stuff. It's not bad for you. It doesn't even make sense physiologically, okay? And I'm not going to spend time on why they made this up and why they said the cholesterol is bad for you and it clogs your arteries and all this other stuff because that's actually not what the science says and that's not how physiology works. However, cholesterol is essential to your health. When you eat cholesterol, you're not raising your cholesterol levels. Your body produces LDL through the liver, okay? Your body is smart and it does that. Okay, there's a lot of our other processes that are happening here, but that has to happen. And so we know that cholesterol is essential for our health. And if you're stressed, you need more cortisol. Cortisol, is, or if you're inflamed, cortisol is your body's strongest anti-inflammatory. Yeah, it's essential. We need it. It's also what happens when you're in a stress response. You need cortisol, and guess what? Cortisol, when it's released, so so if you're stressed, you need higher cholesterol so you can get more of this, right? If you're in a stress mode for a long period of time, your body's not using the cholesterol for this. It's using it for this, and that's also why these can lower down as we go. At the same time, cortisol, when it goes up, it's going to 
decrease your thyroid. It blocks thyroid, thyroid stimulating hormone, which is what tells your thyroid to stimulate and work. So if you're in a stress response, you're gonna have a low thyroid and you don't need to digest food right now because it's a stress response. So your digestive system is gonna decrease. Now if it does that for a period of time, it can affect the microbiome of your digestive system. Okay, let's just say you eat an apple, you're not in digestive mode, your apple ferments, it starts to mess up the microbiome. Simple case there. So your digestion goes down, right? So we have a low digestion, which digestion is a big part that your, your, your gallbladder and your digestive system is a big part of actually breaking down or, or converting T4 to T3. So T4 to T3, so now you're gonna have more issues with your thyroid along with that digestive problem because you've been in a fight or flight response for too long. Your body's not getting back to homeostasis. Your immune system's gonna be lowered, so you're gonna get colds, you're gonna get sicknesses, things like that. If it stays there long enough, it's gonna be hard to fight off cancer. So cancer literally comes from stress, from one of these areas. And this is a broad picture, right? I mean, there's a lot of stressors in that picture, but this is what happens in your body. So you see, guys, it's, it's, it's not genetics. It's not, um, it's, not, it's not just by chance. It's not the germ theory. Germs didn't do this. Germs didn't cause your, cause your immune system to go down. If you have a strong immune system, you don't get colds. The germs are always there. The, the, the flu, the virus, they're always in your environment. You're not getting them when your immune system's up. But when you're stressed, your immune system's gonna go down. That chemical stress right here, that can be sugar, right? That can be inflammatory foods, which causes you to produce more cortisol because it's your body's strongest uh, anti inflammatory. That could be a physical stress that you sit all day on a computer and you're in this mode where you're not moving your spine, your body's in this position, stress on the nervous system, and you're subluxated, which means your spine's not working properly, and it puts stress, stress on your body. Or that could be an emotional stress like we've all experienced. Do you lose a family member? You're in a fight with your spouse, your life, right? Those All those things happen, and so your body gets them all the same. We live now in such a sitting world, a, a, a stationary world with so much sugar and chemicals in our food, that these are higher than they've ever been before. And so this, which has always been there, is now, it, it, so the stress is now affecting you at such a high level. So you see guys, it's, it's, it, if, if you can say, well, I'm gonna get stress out of my life, and that's, that's a good idea, that's a start. But the problem is, is it's not reality. You're gonna have stress. Your key is to make your body more resilient to stress by, uh, uh, by doing the things that help with stress to help your body become more resilient. There's three things, and then I'm gonna end up here. There's three things that, you're, that they've proven, like this, they've actually taken study after study after study and shown that these things, three things, will actually make your body more resilient to stress. They help your central nervous system, the sympathetics and the parasympathetics, adapt. They may help them come back to balance, okay? Number one, I'm running out of space here. Let me put it down here. Hopefully y'all can see this, if not, um, let me just tell you, and then you can you can rewatch the video. So number one is going to be um, thoughts. Number one is how you think, how you perceive your environment, the things you think about on a regular basis. Clearly, if you're a negative thinker, you're going to have a lot of stress, and it's going to keep you in a sympathetic response. If you're a positive thinker, you're going to have a, a happy thoughts, and you're going to be able to balance yourself a lot easier because it's going to help bring your body back into a parasympathetic state. So you want to create the tactics and things for your mindset that's going to help you stay in a parasympathetic state. This is what we do in our office. We help people learn this stuff and teach this stuff. The second thing that they've shown is actually done that will get your body back to a parasympathetic state and relaxation is going to be things called adaptogens. Okay, these are herbs that help your body adapt. Number one is these are there's a lot of them. Okay, turmeric's an adaptogen, CBD oil is an adaptogen. Uh, uh, there's a lot of them. So different mushrooms are adaptogens. I'm going to give you three of the top. Um, let's say four of the top ones that really I think are the best. Number one is a CBD oil coming from a hemp plant is amazing. Number two is going to be rhodiola. Number three is cordyceps. And number four is ashwagandha. Ashwagandha was huge with uh, Dr. Oz talking about it for a while there. But those are all adaptogens and they do that. They take you from this stress response, shift you back to here. Okay. So in our office, we use a supplement. It's called Stress RX. We also use CBD oil. And I didn't just say those four things because that's what we have in our office. There's a lot of different adaptogens, but those are some of the strongest ones and most effective via the research. And the final thing that we know through the studies, again, that can help balance your body into a stress response is getting your spine adjusted. So proprioceptive movement within your spine. When you get adjusted, you're actually moving the spine. You're, you're getting rid of fixations that are creating a stress response in your body. 
in return, it allows your body to adapt back to normal. The number one thing that we do with chiropractic here isn't get rid of back pain and neck pain. The number one thing we do is help make your body more resistant to stress. When you come into our office and you lay down on our table, my only focus is to remove interference, get your spine moving so that you're more uh, uh, resilient to stress. And if you're more resilient to stress, your immune system is stronger, your digestive system works better, your thyroid works better, your cholesterol levels don't matter, they're doing what they're supposed to, your heart rate, your blood pressure, all those things go back to normal. You don't get headaches anymore, you don't get back pain anymore because your body's operating, functioning, and healing at its highest level because it's in homeostasis. I hope that makes sense. I hope that was a big round picture for you guys there. And then once you do those things, those three things to help get your body back to normal and in balance, then you start making sure you're getting the right nutrients and minerals. And that can be specific based on blood work and testing. That can also be specific for you based on what issues you're dealing with. If you consistently have had a thyroid issue over the years, you're going to be now deficient in most likely things like iodine. You're probably toxic from fluoride because fluoride acts like iodine. You're probably toxic from chlorine. You might have some heavy metal issues. So there's testing from that point that you can actually start feeding those things back into you. I typically recommend when it comes to increasing nutrients and getting minerals and all that back into your body, start out with cruciferous vegetables because those things are packed full of it. Okay, And get the things that you need from that and then we can start adding supplements if you need it. The final thing you do is you retrain the system, okay? So you do chiropractic care, you get your spine moving, you get the nutrients back in your body, but you still look like this. You're still constantly putting stress into your system. So we start to remove those stressors from your environment, retrain your body back to here, no longer on the computer like this. Start to focus, start to change the stressors in your environment and retrain the way you see things. And that's how the big picture comes about. That's healthcare, that's ultimately what, how you're gonna get a long-term result with your health. And it isn't a quick fix, it is a lifestyle change, but it's the only answer to your health. You're never gonna get these fixed with the medication. I take that back, you can get your blood pressure down the medication. You're never gonna get back to homeostasis where your body's adapting and surviving and, 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 and thriving unless you create that lifestyle change in your life and do, do those specific things that I just talked about. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hope that made sense. I know it's a lot in a little time. You're going to want to go back and watch this, share this, like this, love it, share it, and help other people understand how their body works. I didn't need to bring up a bunch of research papers because this is physiology. Physiology doesn't lie, right? There's laws to physics, there's or, or physiology, there's laws to health. But just like gravity, if I drop, look, I drop it, it always happens. Well, this is how your body responds to stress. And it makes sense why we have the diseases and the health. And, I, and here's the deal, guys. These aren't diseases. They call them that and they put diagnoses on them, but these aren't diseases. This is your body adapting. It's adaptive physiology. It's normal. We just got to reduce the stressor or learn how to become resil resilient to it. All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening and watching. Hope you got a lot, a lot out of this. And uh, we'll talk to you next time.